。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん
And so when I finally got to the doctor and I walked in there and I sat down and I said, hi, I had never met her before. She had come highly recommended. I said, this is really going to sound crazy to you, but I think I have ovarian cancer. She was like, what? And I said, yeah, you know, I feel like my stomach's distended. I can't lose weight. I showed her a picture of me while I was a crossfitter and I was all fit and muscular. And I said, you know, and I feel like I have some like weird smell about me. I just like there's something not right. So she did all sorts of tests. And when we came back, she said, oh, you know, your estrogen level is like super out of the roof, but, you know, going to send you for your annual mammogram. So I went for the mammogram and you know how like you have a feeling like something isn't right. Mm -hmm. And so the doctor came, the radiologist came back in. He was like, you know, we found two spots at nine and 10 o'clock. I guess they, your breast is like a clock. So they give you the, the, the time of where your cancer is. So um, we're going to have to schedule you for a biopsy. So that was September 7th. I think I went for a biopsy. And then on October 7th, I'll never forget it. I got a phone call. It was like five o'clock and my gynecologist called and she was like, Michelle, you know, and I was like, oh, it's Dr. Shavria, this must be good news because nobody tells you you have cancer over the phone. Well, I guess during COVID, doctors tell you you have cancer. Yeah. So I came home and, you know, we cried with the family because everyone and all my first cousins have cancer, breast cancer. They've either died of it or are survivors. So, you know, you go through that initial shock and, you know, you go to the doctor and you want to be seen. What do you do? Do you get a lumpectomy? Do you get a mastectomy? You know, and I remember going to see an oncologist and I was like, you know, I feel really guilty taking your time because, you know, there are people with worse cancers out there and mine's a little one. And do I get a mastectomy? What do I do? You know, so she sent me to uh a breast reconstruction surgeon and I talked to them and then I decided, okay, I'm going to do the double mastectomy. I get it all set up. It's going to be the day before Thanksgiving. And that Monday before November 23rd, I'll never forget it. I got a call from my doctor and she says to me, Michelle, you know, on the, we're not going to be able to do the surgery because on the x-ray, your pre-op x-ray, we see a spot and we believe it is a primary lung cancer. Now I'm like, I'm like, I just accepted breast cancer. Now I have lung cancer. So now I'm going to need a thoracic surgeon. I, I need a lung biopsy. Like, how are you navigating all of this through COVID, right? Because, you know, everything with COVID, the hospitals were inundated, so I, I know someone, she gets me through, I go to the hospital, we do all the tests, I'm scheduled for a biopsy on December 7th, and lo and behold, I get COVID. Now, the only place that I've ever been is at the hospital, like I'm not going anywhere, my mom at the time is 94, so my friend Regine she has a big house. So she says, okay, you come live with me. So I go to live with her. She gets COVID. Now we both have COVID. She had COVID separately. She's a she's an oncology nurse. So she has COVID. I have COVID. We're living on two sides of the house, you know. Um, well, finally, you know, I test negative, but they still won't do the biopsy. So low, like long story short, December 31st, New Year's Eve day, I go in for a biopsy. And I remember telling the doctor, you know, because I had been coughing and I called a friend of mine who was Latin. I was like, what's a Cuban remedy to stop coughing? She's like, just take a shot of whiskey. So I'm like downing shots of whiskey, you know, because I'm coughing <laughs> like a fiend. And of course, I lie on the application. No, I'm not coughing. I'm fine. And I tell the surgeon, I'm like, listen, buddy, you were doing this biopsy today. I just took a shot of whiskey and you got to go in there. <laughs> tell me so, <laughs> so he does you know and of course it comes back and I have lung cancer right now what stage they think it's early on 
But I will tell you, any any listeners out there, if you're in Florida, the healthcare system down here is is not the best. So um, my cousin Gina, my cousin Mary Grace, now they're up in the, in Pennsylvania. They they see like, okay, this is not going to happen. So what they do is they call Sloan Kettering. And they find me a doctor up there, uh, a breast surgeon and a um, lung surgeon, and they get me a teleconference. They're like, you're going to send all of your, they call me, they're like, you are going to get all this documentation, all your films, you're going to Federal Express it, you have an appointment. So I have an appointment with this Dr. Rocco Gaetano. Anybody out there who's, you know, I mean, he's wonderful, Sloan Kettering. I mean, he didn't pay me to say this, but, you know, he's from Italy. You know, I'm first generation. So I'm thinking, okay, this is this is meant to be, right? But I tell him, look, I already have a doctor. I'm scheduled to have a low back to me, you know. And he says, okay, Michelle, this is very serious. I don't really understand the the um the lag in time in Florida like I, he, he he didn't understand like why it I'm diagnosed in October I'm having a PET scan in January you know that there was no urgency mm -hmm. so he said to me I'm gonna put you down for surgery on February 5th and I'm gonna give you by the end of the week Go to your pre-op, and then you're going to call me, and either we're going to cancel it or not. Okay. okay. Then I have a, a consultation with the breast surgeon, Dr. Jen Mignani, who's now the head of NYU breast, whatever, you know, the whole. Mm -hmm. So I go to my uncle, I mean, my thoracic surgeon for a pre-op visit. And you know how like when you're you're just like standing there staring at somebody and you're like something's not right. And then I realize he puts up his hand and his hand is in a cap. <laughs> and I was like, uh, excuse me, but we're supposed to have surgery in five days. He's like, oh yeah, I um my yeah I broke my hand. I'm like, do you mind me asking how you can't? Oh my god, Jack. So he. He says to me, well, I went skiing. And I thought, you're the chief of thoracic surgery and you're skiing? Like you're, so he goes, well, you could either wait eight weeks. You're telling a cancer patient to wait eight weeks. Or so I, I, I leave there. I call up Dr. Rocco's office. And lo and behold, I'm going to New York. Or so my cousin and her family saved my life. They let me come up there. Well, I go in for the surgery and now it's attacked the lymph node. So what would have been, we're going to do a lobectomy. You're going to go home. You're going to have your breast surgery and you're going to live on your merry way and all of that. So now it's affected, but which I didn't know. And I'm sure every lung cancer survivor out there who, okay, now did it go to the brain? Right. So now they say to me, Michelle, you know, we don't want to scare you, but before the lung oncologist will see you, we need to rule out brain cancer, brain meds. Mm -hmm. So I'm like three cancers and 40 pounds overweight. Come on, like cut me a break. So that comes out negative. Thank God. And so I see the lung oncologist. So what they say is like the camp, the chemo is going to be very intense. I was on premise. Prematexid and cisplatin. Mm. Okay, so that was my cocktail. Um, and so they said, you know, we can't do a double mastectomy. We're going to just go in. I canceled the surgery in Florida. I do the surgery in New York for the lumpectomy. And they say, we'll deal with breast cancer down the road, but the lung cancer is going to be the priority. I will say out there for anyone listening, if you have to have chemotherapy, get a pick line or a port. I didn't want to look like a cancer patient, which I was like so stupid, the things that you think about, right? So I did it through my veins. So now my veins are shot because my right arm is where they took the lymph node for the breast cancer. So you can't do anything there. So now you always have this left hand that's always a struggle getting blood. 
So I make it through the chemotherapy, which anybody out there who's done it, you know, it's weird. It's like the worst time of your life, but you almost feel like you don't remember it. Mm -hmm. Like God's way of just like, you know, and my mom, who was, I was her caretaker. So my girlfriend, Regine, who, you know, she took care of her, my friend, Diane, like they just, you know, came and really, and my sons, Michael and Daniel, really, and, and everybody down here in Florida. But I, I was really glad that my mom did not have to see me suffer through that. Right. You know, I had to work. So, you know, I did my job virtually. And, um, you know, then then you start having, you know, I didn't lose my hair, but my hair burnt off, kind of, if that makes sense. I would say my hair looked like I was electrocuted. I still <laughs> feel that way. <laughs> and then, um, you know, I had some friends up there, Dan and Mary. I'm giving them a shout out because I always wanted to walk the Brooklyn Bridge. And my beautiful friend, Mary, after my first radiation treatment, while I walked the Brooklyn Bridge. Oh, that's cool. So that was like, you know, I was like, they were, because, you know, and my friend Jam was there when I rang the bell. So, I mean, I really feel that um, cancer, even though it was a very negative and painful time in my life, it mm -hmm. also brought um, positive, like positive relationships, people that you were afraid to either apologize to, or, you know, you might have felt like you wronged and, you know, you just come together, you know, my um, ex-husband and his wife, I mean, we're very close. Um, if they're out there listening, they were an integral part of getting me through this. So, you know, you realize that life's short. And I, and I said to you last night, I live my life in six month increments. Every six months I go for a test. And if life is good, at least I know for those next six months, I'm cancer, like I live my life as a cancer free or not evidence of disease. And I try to do the things that I ordinarily would put off till later. Yeah. You know, so, um, you know, this year I changed my job. It had been really stressful and negative and it was kind of toxic. And I did some research on the, I was like, what is EGFR 19? Like, what is that? Like, what does that mean? You know, so you start researching in Google. And I, I did remember reading that that's a mutation that's caused by stress. And I thought, oh, my God, <laughs> I need to, like, really take a step back and, you know, try to you know, not worry so much. You can't change the world. So. Right. Right. So, and I, I, when we talked yesterday, I, my understanding was, I thought if you were going like for a breast exam and then they found it, but no, you were diagnosed with breast cancer and then like, what it like, not even... Right like you turn around, blink, and then you also got diagnosed with lung cancer. Correct, so, it was so quick. Hi, my son were, Daniel just walked in, so I'll let him so, take my dog from barking. So yeah. you were fighting two cancers at the same time. Correct. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And but, then trying to navigate it. You know, by yourself. Right. So they prioritized lung cancer first. And then once that was stable, or whatever they did, then they went to took care of the breast cancer. Am I correct? Correct. Like the way they said it to me was that you don't die from breast cancer. You die when the breast cancer affects an organ or your bones or, the, or your blood, okay. like those type of you know, so at that point, and even the chemotherapy that like cocktail that they were putting in was not going to do anything for the, for the, like it didn't kill two birds with one stone. Like you had the regimen for the lung cancer and then they would deal with the breast cancer when that part was done. Wow. You hear it guys. I remember when I was diagnosed, they, they would say, God, I can't even remember. It's been 10 years for me. But something about um, 
it can, you can't get maybe I can't remember you know electing a brain uh, something about you can't get another cancer but no then I started hearing people were like okay I had lung and someone had breast or something else but Michelle had two at the same time diagnosed back to back this is a first for me thank you so much Michelle for sharing that because my goodness oh and before I forget Donna said love you Michelle you are a warrior yes she is oh I have some like I had my work my work family was amazing they really took care of me you know Tracy so, Marcia Donna they're all so you had a great support system as well yes and my school psychologist she was like my therapist off the record <laughs> And that's amazing. And I know last week we talked about having a good support system and you're hearing it again. Michelle had an excellent support system. I did. And having a support, you know, you know, whoever it is. It's well, so you know, important. in the beginning, I didn't feel the need to tell people. I was kind of very quiet about it. But I remember when I was at Sloan, they were like, you have to tell your story. Like, if you don't tell your story, like, you don't know what your story will do for the next person. Yes. And this is why I do these interviews because it's so important. So if anyone missed today, it's in my page. I even put it on YouTube. They could always go back and rewatch it because it's so important. Every story is unique, but every story is very, um, is that a word, impactful? <laughs> Maybe I made it up. It, it, it could cause an, an impact to someone else because- my goodness, it's not easy living with lung cancer. That is for sure. And we have our good and bad days. And I know that I had my share of bad days, but I just re remind myself that I'm a badass. Get up. Your grandkids need you. Stop moping around. Get up. And I do. And, and I'm pretty sure from your uh, talking to you, Michelle, you and I, we seem to have the same like a positive mindset we have that strong character so we're both the same okay mary um frawley Connolly said i think you are both miracles well thank Aww. you thank you mary yes i've been called um i've been called a miracle and so is my youngest daughter so yeah we're a miracle let me see christine put a, a flower uh centron i hope i'm saying it right christine said Central, she put yeah, that's my up. principal. She saved my, like, she, I'm working with her now. My whole life is like oh. really special. It's great working with her and oh. having my best buddy be my yes. boss telling me when to, when to be quiet and to cease <laughs> and desist. <laughs> and then Lino, Lino Hernandez said, ah. love you so much. Felicia? Felicia, Fifi. Well, I call her Fifi, yeah. Okay. She's uh -huh. my then, psychologist. Yeah. Hola, Lino. Okay, so. <laughs> they're great. Um, yeah, well, you, you, yeah, you, they're here. They're supporting you. Thank you guys for joining us and supporting her uh, while she shares her story. Um, You know, um, I, I started this a while ago and then I had to take a break. It was just so overwhelming. And I kind of took a break like, right around when my mother passed and I just couldn't. And then everyone's like, you got to do it again. So I'm back to doing it and educating, bringing awareness, um, sharing stories, all that stuff, because it is so important for our, not our story, our voices, everything to be heard, to get out there. Because like I always tell um, everyone, you know, lung cancer matters too. We matter too. So, you know, I'm big in the biomarker testing and I'm big in that stigma stopping that stigma so that's that's what i focus but on. the stigma like that if you're not a smoke like that you're getting lung cancer if you don't smoke right right i, I never right my you know it, did i smoke or i probably tried it when i was young with my stupid friends like oh hey let's go try some cigarettes i mean not like i was a smoker but you know tried it yeah of course i was a dumb kid trying it with my friends um but i've been told like Oh, well, honey, it's self-inflicted. No one told you to smoke. Yeah, that's your fault. So I used to get angry, but now what I do is I educate them. I haven't got that yet. Thank God, knock on wood. 
But if I ever do, I don't get angry anymore. I educate them. I said, oh, no, sweetheart, let me educate you. And then I tell them in a nice way because um, you're ignorant to the situation. <laughs> My husband's like, do you have to be? I go, yeah, I do have to be because they came at me. So now I'm going to come at them in a nice, but yet like go, how can I say it? Like, and uh, well, I just oh, think that, nice. you know, educating them on the facts yeah. you know, I was totally blindsided I didn't know I mean you know it was really ironic because I had some friends here like right before I was going in for my breast surgery mm -hmm. and they were like oh did you have your pre-op and I was like no and then my friend said oh yeah my friend had her pre-op and they found lung cancer and I was like oh I hope that isn't me and then it was me oh, you know gosh. and then I was like oh so but you know it's 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 like a distant memory. You always worry, like if you have cancer and you're you're not mm -hmm. cancer right now or whatever. You know, there's always that it's always fear true. that it'll come yeah. back with a vengeance. But yes. yes. So tell the people you love them. Yes. And any of my family that's watching, I love you all and thank you for yeah. being there. And if anybody else is out there and they have questions, you know, please feel free to message me. I'm happy to share my story. Mm -hmm. Of course. And Gina um, Storelli said, love you. And I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Dan Bonsanti. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, guys. Um, Michelle is a hero. Yes, she is. And then Mary again. Um, kindly, she said, <laughs> she goes, thanks for sharing your story. It makes me get off my pity pot a lot. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. And then Mary says, love you. Vicky Ochoa says, blessings. Thank you, Vicky. And then Mary again said, Dan, Dan, love you. So, yeah. So, you you have a lot of... Um, I have uh, a great support system. Yes, Believe yes, me, it was there. Um, I'm so blessed. Yes, you are. Very blessed. Very, very. Now, there's another thing that, um, that we talked briefly yesterday. Um, you, you were going to share about prior to cancer being for afraid of certain things remember oh yeah like i mean Talk before, about that. well you know i was always afraid to speak up for myself if something you know um was bothering me or i you know i let i i, I feel like i let people walk all over me you know it was but or that i was afraid to express my feelings and now, um, or do things or worry about like, how will I pay for that? How will I do that? Or, you know, yeah. and now it's like a sense of freedom in just that, you know what, if, if you mistreat me, I'm going to let you know you mistreat me. And I'm going to be honest about like, I feel it's real important that, um, you know, when I work with special needs children, it's a passion of mine to be the voice for, for students that can or speak for themselves. Right. But that it's important, you know, that it's okay to, to to care about yourself too. And now I just remembered one thing that my mother said to me because I was so I gave so much of my life to this job that I had. And I remember coming home and she would try to talk to me and then she'd say, What's the use of talking to you? Because all you do is work. And like when she passed in December, like that really rang true to me that you know you got to give yourself to your the people around you and your family and make memories you know things that I wanted that were materialistic I, I don't care about right I just want to travel and since you're a travel agent I'm gonna be <laughs> having to uh, make some nice trips for me no yes 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 guys anyone out there watching I'm a travel agent. I do that on the side because I can't work either. I am on disability, you know, for lung cancer. But, you know, that's my little side hustle. So if anyone's looking for travel, hit me up. I, I do that too. Um, I used to do Mary Kay. And okay, I loved it. And I, I love the product. But it's like, you know, I've done it for so long. And then it's like, I wasn't like getting, like, I would tell them, like, come on, people, buy it. Go, well, you know, we still got stuff. They bought so much that they had stuff to last them. So that kind of like... um. I mean, um, it's still there, but not as much as travels. Like everyone just travels. Um, uh, someone named Mara, I said, uh, Ma Mulder 
says, love you, Michelle. You are so strong and brave. And then Lino shared, Michelle has given, given us strength and the drive to get screened as we tend to put them off. Yes, Lino. Uh, Lino has had health challenges this past year and Michelle has been an amazing source of support for our family. That's amazing. And that's what it is. It's about supporting each other, um, being there for those, you know, friends and family, those that you love. Um, and I always say what you put out, you get it back tenfold. And I truly uh, believe in that. Um, if, if you're always negative or, you know, always complaining and, or, you know, just, just always in this like negative mood, always with this negative energy, well, that's all you're going to get. And that's all you're going to attract them type of people. But if you surround yourself with positive people, with people that's going to uplift you and you find it in you to uplift yourself, like I have to do, I have to, I have done it. I can't even talk today so many times to uplift myself. Um, because trust me, I've been in some dark places the past 10 years dealing with this damn disease um, and then losing my mother and then my youngest daughter um, uh, attempted a suicide. She did survive, but it's been a struggle. So I've been through hell and back, but I try to find joy and light somewhere down that darn tunnel and um, and I keep myself uplifted, but surround yourself with people that actually care and it makes such a difference in our lives. So, I, Lino, I'm so glad that Michelle was there for you to help you with your health challenges. Um, that is so important. And just remember, people, surround yourself with people that think positive and, and, and want. So, like I told my daughter, if you surround with people that are ambition and they have goals and says, okay, well, I'm, I, you know what? I'm saving my money or I'm doing this. And then you'll start to be like, oh, well, you know what? I want to be like mary sue over there and bobby joe over there i want to do that so then you start doing it but if you surround yourself with people that always want to drink and always want to party and blow their money off and whatever strip joints so at the bar at the club then that's what you be so you're surrounding yourself with that negative energy and that's what you're going to track and that's what you become then i just feel like you never accomplish anything and never amount to anything because you're too busy following be a leader but when you, you follow these people and surround yourself with people that, you know, every morning send you a text and a motivational meme or whatever they call them nowadays, then that's different. So, yeah. Positive I mean, mindset. Yes. Like I was saying yesterday um, that, you know, you can't focus on the cancer so much because you can go outside and get hit by a car or, you know, you just never know when your time is. So exactly. you got to just take every day that you have and do the most with it. Yes. I remember I did a video for, oh God, who was it? Lung can lung. Oh God. Lung cancer foundations of America. So it's one of them. I do so much stuff. And it was like, um, it was about little things matter. And I remember doing a video, it was a short little, short video, and it was about little things that matter. And, you know, growing up, and of course, you know, I'm a mother of five, you know, like the bigger things like, oh, I want this, I want that. And then when I got lung cancer, and I'm like, you know what, even the smallest things, the most littlest things matter. So in the beginning of the summer, before it gets so darn hot here in this year, Chicagoland area has been, God, I felt... Yesterday was so hot. I couldn't breathe. I thought I was back in Dubai. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Me and my daughter were dying. But um, I remember um, in the beginning of the summer, I would always have, there's a window right here next to me and I could hear the birds chirping. Growing up or even 10 years prior to that, whatever, I never really enjoyed it. And now it's things like that, like open my windows and I want to hear the birds and I hear the birds chirping. And that might be a small thing, but that brings me joy that, wow, I hate snow. I, I think in my past life, I was an island girl. I, I want heat. But every winter, I'm like, thank you. I say thank you that I saw another winter. I hate snow, but I could sit in my kitchen and I have this huge window drinking my coffee and watch the snow fall. And then I could watch my husband and my boys, you know shovel while I'm waving at them like hi because I'm not going out there because Juanita and snow don't mix so I don't go out but just little things that matters and yeah 
I mean, and like Michelle said, take she likes to travel and I'm going to help her go somewhere and take those trips. That's why I became <laughs> a travel agent because I want those perks. So if you want those perks, let me know. We could be a team. But um, I get those perks. I get those deals. I get those discounts. So guess what? I'm going to go travel. I mean, and like Michelle said, you're, you know, I know people that got diagnosed with lung cancer and made it and they ended up dying you know, because of something else. It had nothing to do with lung cancer. So yeah, life is short, guys. Enjoy. Enjoy. Well, thank you. Yes. Okay. Lino says, I love the quote, when you see the good, the good gets better. Yes, Lino. I love that. I'm going to, if you don't mind, I'm going to show, well, I don't know whose quote it is, but I'm going to share that um, as my, as my post on Facebook. When you see the good, the good gets better. I love that. Thank you for sharing. Yes. That might be a Felicia quote. Felicia quote. Okay. Coming through Lena. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to use that quote, Lena. Thank you. Um, so anyone out there watching, another, you know, our lung cancer people out there, anyone, do you guys have any questions for Michelle? Put them in the comments. Um because she just, she, she, her story was amazing. Um, she shared, she educated, she brought awareness. Um, and now I know that, yeah, you can have two cancers at one time. I never knew that there's, you know, there's so many, like I heard that someone, well, I knew someone, unfortunately she passed away. She was from Wisconsin. She was diagnosed with non-small cell and I think she was EGFR. And then all of a sudden, you know, she was, she was having issues and they couldn't figure it out. And then she found out that she also on top of non-small cell, she was diagnosed with small cell lung cancer. She had both of them. Wow. Yes. That was the first for me. And it's like, wow. So yeah. I'm telling you with lung cancer, it is so unpredictable. It's like, we're still researchers, oncologists, the medical professionals, I think, they're still learning about lung cancer. That's how complicated lung cancer is. Like Michelle has EGFR exon 19. I'm out positive. Um, don't ask me. All I know is that, and I had, you know, 10 years and you think I will know this. Um, so it's, it's, um, God, I don't even know what it is. It's like um, something triggered it. So something triggered my lung cancer and it's out positive something triggered it what i don't know and i'm not going to try and figure it out because at this point it's irrelevant i don't care anymore um i'm living i'm thriving i'm surviving i got to meet two grand uh, babies and one on the way i just found out I'll be grandma again so i'm excited i'm planning baby showers i got to plan a wedding i got to plan a bridal shower now a baby shower and then the the uh the other grandparents to be that this will be their first this will be my third. And I told, they want a gender reveal. I said, look, I don't have money and time for this. You could plan the gender reveal. I'm in charge of the baby shower. That's all I want. So they're, they're planning the gender reveal. So let, let them do it. That's, um, <laughs> girl on, on, a, on total security disability. I, I got to make that money stretch. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I got to, I'm going to Italy in October with my sister. So I'm trying to pay off all my darn credit cards so I could go with zero balance. So if I want to buy something, I just charge it. So that's why I'm, I've been broke because I've been made, sending big payments. So uh, well, October comes all four. Um, well, two of them I don't have. I think it, two of them I do have a big balance and there'll be zero. So at least I'm, I'm okay with that. But yeah, that's my... And that's my gift for my 10 year is Italy and Cancun. I'm taking two trips. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So I don't think there's any questions, uh, Michelle. So then we could go ahead and, um, and, um, and end it. But before we end it, those that are watching lung cancer, brothers and sisters, non other cancers, or just anyone that might be going through anything because we all go through storms in our lives um can you give them some encouragement you know what can you give them to encourage them i mean what can you tell them i'm sorry to encourage them 
The only thing I, I, you know, that, oh, encouragement. Well, my saying is don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. So, you know, just look at the bright, like I always try to look at the positive what's of what's happening, not the negative. So, you know, like times may be tough, but that like times are bad, but not that tough, you know, like you can get through, you know, just right. like, you know, I, I don't know. I just, just stay positive and, you know, take day by day, you know, it's too overwhelming if you look too far in the future. Right. No, I agree. No, but that's great. Stay positive guys. Stay encouraged, stay positive. And like Michelle said, look at the bright side. Yes, we all go through storms, but there's always the next day and there's better days. And like I said, there's always light at the end of that tunnel. And I've seen that light plenty of time and it's got me through because I just reach out for it. Um, especially when I thought I lost my daughter and um, she's a miracle. So that has really given me um, lots of, of hope out there. So now, um, not only am I a huge advocate for lung cancer, I'm going to start advocating for um, suicide prevention. So um, I'm just learning about it. I'm not. So if any, any of you guys have any advice for me or, or like where I could get more information, learn about it, send it my way uh, because then that's my next. So I'll be doing both. Um, and I think I was put on this planet to do just exactly that. I don't know. Uh, so I'm still here and she's here to share her story. So, well, again, Michelle, thank you again so much for taking time. Thank um, you for asking me to do for, this. Thank yes. You. And taking time and, um, and sharing your story. And, and it was so informative. So, uh, God, I've learned so much and, and now I know, and it's great. And I know many of my viewers um, know, and if you didn't, now you know. And so, like Lino said, don't put off your health. Don't put off um, anything. If you're not feeling well, if, if you know, if your mammogram, if, we all should get a mammogram every year. I know I'm, I'm actually overdue. I got to go for a mammogram. Um, get it every year. Um, at a certain age, colonoscopy, get, get that done. If you're having issues prior to that, get it done before, I think it's 50. I don't even know. Um, th I'm 55 this year. Yeah. So I was supposed to get it done this year. And I kind of snuck out of the doctor's office because I hate that thing. So I know he's going to make me do it sometime this year, if not the beginning of next year. Get those colonoscopy, get those mammograms. Um, if you're a former smoker or even if you do smoke, get a low dose CT scan. It's it'll it'll save it'll save your life, trust me. Just get it done. Um, especially if you're a former smoker, get them done annually and and make your doctor um get you a CT scan. Um, like they say, early prevention. They catch it early, like Michelle was caught at stage two. Last week, um, God, who did I interview last week? I forgot. She was caught at stage one. So it was called early. Um, they were both accident, you know, accidental findings, but still it was a blessing. So yeah, don't put nothing off. Just, you know, get your blood to work. We're, when, you, when you start getting up at a certain age, our body is not the same, guys, when we were in our 20s or 30s. So, you know, even if you feel heart palpitation, go get that checked out. It doesn't matter. You know, your cholesterol, your blood pressure, your, you know, um, glucose, get it checked. Uh, I can't stress it enough because all of that is preventable. And you, you know, want to stay on this earth as long as you can. So, again, guys, thank you so much for joining us again, Michelle. Um, thank, thank you. So much. you. You have a great evening. My viewers, have a great evening. Have a great upcoming weekend. And then come back next week. Next week, I don't even know who I'm interviewing. I'm interviewing somebody. I got to look at my calendar. But I'll be back. Like I say, same bat channel, same bat time. <laughs> I love saying that. Till next Thursday. All right, guys. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Okay, bye-bye.